Okay, cool. So uh, I'll just uh, quickly start with Helium Hiker and what it is. So uh, Helium Hiker is something I created last year. Uh, it was more of a side project where I was interested in working in or at least getting data from blockchain and creating something useful for users. So I came up with Helium Hiker, and initially it was just like uh, I wanted to see the hotspot rewards uh, by a month. Sure. Um, and uh, if user wants to uh, enter specific dates, uh, they can do that. And, and and that was something was not available at that time. Right. And I still think that uh, only maybe some some tools are providing that information, and uh, most of the things were driven by the addresses. So I wanted to provide them easy way to get that information. So I'll just quickly use one name, right? A large butter bat, uh, and uh, let's just say I want to provide a date. I just want to see what's happening in May. So user can just enter the start date. If it, if they don't enter the end date here, it will just take until the today's date. Yep. And click on Hotspot Rewards. It will go pull the data from uh, Helium API, and it will display it on a screen. Another thing it will do is it will also try and show the list of uh, Hotspot this account has on a site. OK. So voila, here, here it is. So for example, this Hotspot has earned 16 HNT in 16 days. Um, it has also a lot of other hotspots associated with the wallet. And uh, it's available here. So user can quickly just browse it through. Oh, cool. OK, so for each city, you can see what's in there. Nice. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so that's available. And uh, user can directly go from uh, look at the account rewards or the challenge analysis. Those are the two other features I have on the Helium Hiker. Yeah. So they can quickly go ahead and do that as well from here. Uh, okay. And they have the city, uh, I mean, state and city list here. Yeah. So they can quickly see that as well. So and one does of the this thing work outside of the US or is this only in the, in the US? Because I see state and city. What happens if it's over in Europe or? Anywhere else? It it's it works. It's not by con country yet, but it will just order by still the state and city of those uh, foreign countries as well. Okay. So it, it works. Um, yeah. So it is there. Uh, and when then I do show account rewards. What it will do is it will pull the same date range reward, but for the entire account. So oh, cool. Okay. Yeah. So. It pulled in, right? And uh, what it will do is it will just show all the hotspots oh, with cool. what the reward is. And they will have the link to challenge analysis from there as well, right? So this is really helpful if you're trying to get an idea of what's happening with maybe some of my hotspot. Like in this example, uh, this one is doing good in the city, but maybe this one is not. And Maybe something may be happening there, right? So right. things like that, they can easily try and understand, compare the data. And the other use case is many times, again, you're not hosting all the hotspots. They are distributed towards the host. So if you just want to quickly uh, pay out a host, uh, I have seen some usage where the weekly payout or a like biweekly payout where user just comes here, enter the date range, and then go to the account rewards page. They already know. Uh, each of the rewards and basically based on a percentage, they can go ahead and distribute the rewards. I mean, I the functionality is not there to distribute the reward, sure. but just to get that information. There's a calculated there is. Okay. Cool. Exactly. So yeah, this is uh, the account rewards page. And I'll quickly just go to like let's say challenge analysis now, which is the other part of it. And all of this can be accessed through the home page as well. The user use user don't have to follow this uh, flow. Uh, but I just wanted to give them flexibility and functionality so that they can access uh, this functionality without entering more information. They just entered hotspot name once. They are able to go from hotspot page to account page, look at all the different data they want to see. And if they want to dive deeper, they can. Dig it.
Yeah, so let's go through the challenge analysis now, right? So, so before we do the challenge analysis, I'm, yeah. I'm curious about this because that first part is pretty simple and straightforward. It's like, oh, how much does a hotspot have or how much is it made or a group? of That, that seems pretty straightforward. This thing is, is a little bit more complicated and I'd love to know kind of what your background is or, or how you figured out how to do all this stuff. Is this what you do for work or what does it look like for you? No, so I, I, I have been in the analytics space for almost 12 years now. Okay. And uh, that's what my background is. Mainly, I, I love coding and um, I wanted to do something for myself where I wanted to learn a new skill. Yeah. Um, so I was interested in Python for quite some time. And this just provided me a very good opportunity where uh, I learned by doing it. And yeah. I learned Python uh, by just uh, using Helium API and Helium data to understand what's going on in the back end and uh, basically combine all of that together. So I I learned a lot over last eight months sure. and applied that here. So everything from the Helium hacker perspective, it just started as like, hey, I, I, I wanted to get data from the API. Yep. Once that step was done, I was like, okay, I want to move forward and see what, what else can I do. So I started implementing a simple functions where I can collect data based on a different date ranges and show it on a terminal. And that was helpful. So the, the next step towards that was like, you know, I really want to uh, have this available as a UI. So I learned Flask, uh, again, extension of Python. So yep. then Python Flask, I was able to create a simple UI. Then I got into Bootstrap so that I can make the, the websites look good. And yep. this this site, right? Again, they are also uh, what you call uh, they are responsive. Yeah. Responsive. Yeah. So they adapt to how which device users are using to look at the UI. Super cool. And then it seems like from the beginning you've shared everything you've done. Like it's all been super public. Does that come from any any particular kind of ethos, or was it just like, oh, it's easier to make it public and see what other people are doing to test it? Yeah, I mean, my, my goal was, uh, so two parts of it, right? Again, it was mainly for me, it was a, a side project to learn things. So I kind of wanted to share that, but more than that, uh, there are other tools out there which is kind of providing this information as well. Yep. But personally for me, if I have to create an account and, uh, log into it each time. I did not want it to go that route. I quickly just wanted to uh, provide the information to users because I mean, the blockchain data is public anyway, right? So right. I did not want it to add a layer to it and make this data semi-public by creating an account and do that. So I, I just took an approach where I want to keep it open and uh, that's what it is. Awesome, I love it, I love it. Yeah, and I mean, even even here, right? If you look at it, there is a lot of detail in this page, and this all just comes from like talking to people and understanding what they are looking for and things like that, right? So, in general, overall here, there is a overall wallet rewards. Yep. It provides you a date range. This is a link where it will directly link to the explorer, sure. Helium, and uh, for each city, they will still have the the reward here, and they can dig in and identify how the each of the uh, hotspot within that city looks as well. So it, it has information packed in it. Yeah, no, it's it's super cool. It's it's interesting to see it laid out that way. I, I, I got a lot of folks who are asking me how to find great performing hotspots. And this is a, a cool way is once you stumble across one pretty good wallet, you can just see what strategy they're using and, and go through it over and over again. Then yeah, like you, Say here, you can see this overt chartreuse weasel is like, oh, what's what's going on with that? Why is it not as exactly? I mean, it, it's very very useful in, in terms of for me it is, and uh, I I feel that when you're comparing uh, your wallet hotspots because you'll probably know the setup as well, so it makes you wonder that hey, what can I do to the other hotspots so that it performs well as well? Sure, yeah. yeah. So yeah, I mean that's that's mainly the account rewards. I actually really love this page. The usage has not been that much as I would have hoped, but sure. I mean again, it it, it really on a personal preferences. But uh, yeah, it's available out there. It's uh, it's uh, accessible to anyone who wants to use it. Um, 
Yeah, so that's the account rewards page. Um, and uh, then I, I think I had clicked earlier on one of the hotspot for... That's me. <laughs> <laughs> yep, no worries. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll just quickly take one other example and see. Uh, I see, so moth. Like and... We all know these hotspot names by heart. Now we got our like six that we can check. No <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it's it's really super cool. The whole naming of the hotspot, it's very brilliant and super cool. Yeah, yeah, it's a funny thing. Yeah, so I, I just clicked one and uh, let's say challenge analysis. Uh, it should load up pretty soon. Hmm, okay. I've seen this, these, this takes a couple minutes sometimes. Um, is it, it's pulling it from Helium. And so if Helium is slow in general, if the blockchain is slow, then this will be a little bit slower. Is that how it works or is there something else? No, no. So the, the challenge receipt analysis is actually created on a MetaBase instance of DY. So what I'm doing is I'm just uh, enabling users to access it through here. But this is just pulling data from the uh, MetaBase instance. And I, I believe what's happening here is that there are no beacon data, but there looks like a witness data. So apparently on this hotspot, doesn't look like that there is a, maybe I'll just use this one, perfect cloth buffalo. Sure. Yeah, it's super cool to see all this stuff just happening. And I mean, I think that this challenge receipt analysis, it's amazing. I've, I've showed it to people who are way more savvy than I am. And they're like, oh my God, that's what I would have built for myself. That thing's rad. And, and I think that's what it was as well, right? For me, when I think when we look at it, when uh, HIP 15 and HIP 17 were being implemented, right? One of the thing I saw was like, hey, you know, I, I, I think people want to know at the yeah. high level what's happening because yeah. At the time, app had data, but it was like, hey, you have to go one by one and look at it. Yep. This just provided them ability to look at overall how it's going. Do I need to do anything different? Yep. And is there a pattern that you look for where you're like, oh my gosh, I do need to do something differently? Or, or does it, you kind of take it as it goes for each of these blocks, 1.1, 1.2, et cetera? Yeah, I mean, I, I generally just look at high level first and mm -hmm. then dive into detail. Uh, so in this case, right, again, majority of my witnesses, uh, so in this case, right, just to go high level, what this is, yep. is the first part of the dashboard is your hotspot as a transmitter. So there are two parts of it. Well, actually, there are three parts of it from the hotspot perspective, but I have not included the challenger, which is generating challenges for some other hotspot in the world, right? Yep. For me, that is not something you can control, right? Your hotspot is right. generating a challenge and that's it. You are just collecting the witnesses and yep. the information after that. But this is where you can really impact if you maybe improve your setup, right? So that's where I wanted to show two parts of it where how is your hotspot doing as a transmitter where your hotspot is doing a beacon and then other uh, hotspots nearby are witnessing your beacons, right? So that's the first part. And the second part here is how your hotspot is doing in terms of witness, like other where other hotspots nearby are uh, beaconing the challenges and your hotspot is witnessing it. And both parts are equally important to yeah. understand because uh, uh, again, more of the reward should be towards the witness. So although this is important as well because you do get it rewarded higher if you have, uh, let's say five or more good witnesses. So this is this brings up kind of one important point that a lot of people miss is that any given hotspot doesn't beacon that many times per day. So yes. people get really twisted up about their transmit reward scale being 0. 0.5 or 0. 0.3. And, and that's definitely not good. But if we look at this, your hotspots beaconing, you know, two to three times a day on average, like that doesn't that doesn't have as big of an effect as how many hotspots you're witnessing. So it's a pretty interesting thing to, to see off the bat. Yeah, that is correct. And and uh, yeah, that, that's one of the thing. Uh, again, it does make a little bit of a difference because let's say if you are in a neighborhood where your reward scale is down, it most likely will be the case where other hotspots nearby will have the lower reward scale as well. Yep. And if you are witnessing them, that will affect. But again, I, I don't think that sh should matter because if your reward scale is low, that means you have a lot of hotspots nearby, which is a good thing for you because you can witness a lot. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. Well, max max is out at 25. Now, is there anything in here where it says that you have a number of, let's say, earning witnesses, or is it just witnesses total? So this is just witnessing total, but I'll, let's just quickly go through it, right? Yeah. So in this case, this is the beacon. So in this case, looks like uh, it will show you how many beacons were sent out. So that's just a high level. And then how many uh, witnesses witnessed your beacon? In right. this case, there are some invalids as well. And then you can see that in 1.3 1 and 1.4, uh, this will tell us which witnesses were valid and which witnesses were invalid. And I mean, as you can see, right? Probably. Hang, hang on one second. I got a, I got a jackass dog that's just going off at the, someone at the, at the front door. Give me one second. Sorry. Yeah, no worries. <laughs> okay. Jeez. I'll cut that part out. Good heavens. <laughs> yeah. No worries. So yeah, I mean, go, going back to this, right? So how I would look at it is, I would start by just looking at one bot one and say how many beacons my hotspot has done. And in this case, it looks like around three, four to three, right? I mean, it, it varies, but the, the number is around that for almost all the hotspots. So th that looks good. And then it looks like that depending on the witnesses, right? This one looks like is witnessing a lot of them. So it, it has a 65 valid witnesses, which is pretty awesome. Yep, that's so, good enough for sure. And I mean, that number match up as well, right? So in this case, four beacons, 100 witnesses. So it looks like that day, all 25 of witnesses receipt were submitted. Nice. In this case, only 37. So maybe some were missed out, right? Here, 65. So that's the case, right? That if some of the hotspots are relayed, that means we were not able to get receipts in time. So even though they witnessed it, we were not able to register it. So those are the kind of things also this provides a good information on and and right that's the relay is another thing which people are now actively looking at oh yeah and i do have a way of getting there as well okay yeah cool. but but in general i mean i if this is the hotspot what i would like to see is hey i would like to see more green <laughs> that's just a visual when i have more green i'm earning more rewards because majority of my witnesses are coming up as valid and that's the good sign Yep. Now, it looks like that maybe there were like a couple where it just did not have any. And I mean, this could be just a network issue or timing, or it could be a couple things. But I would like to see more green, and that's basically it. And and once I have that idea, right, uh, let's say I'm seeing a lot more red, then I would like to dive deeper into it. So that's where this 1.3 and 1.4 helps. So what that does is uh, that gives me an idea uh, of which of the hotspots are really doing all the witnessing and uh, when when did it happen? So in this case, looks like this 12 or so hotspots, uh, majority of them are today uh, witnessed. Yep. And what time it witnessed, how many times they witnessed it, and what's the RSSI and SNR range uh, of those witnesses. Nice. Are you going to put the RSSI SNR stuff in kind of the green red that Helium uses as far as their curve? Or is you're kind of leaving that for right now on, on people to figure out? Yeah, I, I haven't put it in there, but I mean, the, the charts are available on the right. uh, Discord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, they're totally available. It's, I see a lot of people just having trouble finding stuff. So it's always neat when it's in one place, but this looks super cool. Okay. Yeah. So I, I would quickly say that even if you go to the Helium Hiker, Pin mm -hmm. post, I believe someone has uh, provided the chart here. So Perfect, yep. yeah, Jess Williams, you can quickly see that here. Yep. Okay. I mean, it, it may be old. I don't know if Helium had made an update to it, but yeah, it is available here. Yep. Cool. Okay, cool. So, and, and the thing is, right, that I have separated out the valid witnesses versus invalid witnesses. Yep. So this looks like a valid range, right? Oh, good, yeah. And again, it's a combination of things. So it's just not one thing. But in this case, it says witness RSSI too high. Um, and uh, probably 10 challenges where it could have been valid, right? But it's not because the RSSI is too high. So they can dive in deeper as well. Yeah. And one of the other thing I have is also have a cool integration here mm -hmm. where if user wants, they can just click on this yeah. and it will open up a Helium place. And oh, cool. they can see well, what's going on if, if just a hotspot nearby or what's happening. 
things like that. Nice. Super cool. So you can see that this is probably a close hotspot because you know where, yep, this one. Exactly, is. right? So this is the perfect cloth buffalo and this is the other one. So it yep. looks like it may be just an uh, uh, issue with the witness being near. Yep. So yeah, it does provide that and uh, it's available here as well. And uh, yeah, so all the things where you see in blue, the, you can click on it and yeah, something sure. will happen. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> it's like a treasure hunt. Cool. <laughs> exactly. So yeah, I mean, so that's mainly the purpose of this, right? Where you want to see dive into detail. Uh, yeah, and if for any particular uh, uh, challenge you want to see that, this is like the detailed data. Like this is the summary. Oh, sorry, the, the detail. Yep. At the level of this is my transmitter. This is my witness if witness valid or not, what's the reason, SNR and RSSI ranges. And there is a link where you can click on it and it will go to Explorer. And this will be the specific challenge. Right. So they have the map and stuff as well. So it's kind of helpful. Yeah, super cool. All right, neat. OK, cool. So that's the first part of it, which is my hotspot is transmitting beacon challenges and other hotspots are witnessing. The yep. other part is how many witnesses that I am witnessing. So again, in this chart, it's basically the same, but this is just like, hey, this is the number of challenges I witness. But yep. I would just focus on 2.2 .2 because that will also give me number of invalids versus valids. Oh, nice. And when you hover over it, it changes the, what's highlighted. Cool. Yes. Neat so, little details, yeah. Yeah, little detail. And I mean, you, a user can come here and also do the same. Okay. Um, yeah, but the same thing, but the other way that how many hotspot beacon challenges I witnessed and uh, how many the other way. I mean, I ideally, most likely in the case where some of this hotspot will end up showing in the uh, 2.4 as well, but not always. Dig it. Yeah, so this will provide a quick view, right? It, it just looks like in this case that this vast lemon rabbit probably is just nearby and it's just uh, facing some issue with the RSSI SNR thing. Yep. But that's basically it. I mean, otherwise it's looking pretty good. It is witnessing a lot and uh, most of the witnesses are valid as well. So pretty good example and pretty good case where I'm doing fine, and if I just want to make some improvements, maybe uh, uh, see what I can do here on this three of the hotspots. When you say see what you can do there, what what would be things that you you would think of to do in order to to improve that? Yeah, I mean, it, it really depends, right? Because Helium uses a lot of calculations to come up with that, right? So if it is RSSI too high, right? Maybe uh, uh, they want to change if they have upgraded the antenna, but may not have updated that in the app, right? Because Helium, by default, uses the antenna, uh, all the calculations with the, the, the stock antenna. But yeah. if you have upgraded the antenna, but not have changed that information in the app, maybe that's causing something, right? So that could be right. many things. So this dashboard is just surfacing, hey, that something might be wrong that you want to take a look at it. But God. there could be many, many steps. Yeah. OK, so if and I, what I'm thinking is that if you own both sides, if you own the transmitter and the receiver, then you can start to really make some changes. But if you don't know who Vast Lemon Rabbit is, the only thing you can do is, is work on your side and say, maybe I'll get a different antenna or dial it down, get a lower gain, whatever it is. OK. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and, and again, if you have a majority of the hotspot is showing up in the invalid, but not invalid, and that's really where you want to say, hey, really, something is wrong and I need to fix it. Right. In this like case, I mean, be a couple problems. Okay. Yeah, in this case, things are looking pretty good. So I, I, I mean, I, I can still improve it, but uh, the, the challenge analysis is just giving you that opportunity to do that. Yeah, super cool. Yep, and I also have the same kind of detail here as well, right? Where uh, you can see, and it will also link you to the uh, hash, and uh, you can see it in the map as well. So right. that's the challenge analysis dashboard. Yeah, super, super cool. Okay. I like it. I like it. It's one more tool in the toolbox to use to to check out a hotspot and see what's going on. And especially if you've got a fleet of them and you're deploying them in, in patterns where you're picking the pattern, this could be really, really helpful. Yep. That's, yeah, that's neat. All right. Well, it, it's definitely helpful. And uh, we have been, and even from the data perspective, right, I kind of wanted to show that what data we are using. And this is in an Eastern time. 
So yeah. uh, uh, as of now, I think it's refreshing every 30 minutes or so. Okay. So uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. And uh, all the data is available. And users are able to ask a lot of questions uh, just based on this data as well. Now, I'll quickly go show you one more thing, yeah, <laughs> which is how you don't even have to go to challenge analysis to get this information. I have a bot, which oh, cool. does that for you. So I have a bunch of commands that I can run. So with help, you will be able to see all the commands. And, and then on the hiker server, the healing hiker server. Yes. Uh, yeah. So the link. Uh, I on my hiker helium hiker channel channel on the helium community. Yep. I have a pinned post, and user can just click on this link, and that right. will take them to the helium hiker server. This is the helium hiker server, and then in the bot commands, user can run those commands. So uh, let's say if someone wants to know the HNT prize, uh, they can write HNT prize, and uh, it will show up with the prize. OK. And uh, user can uh, go. So the one I wanted to show was this one. Uh, what was the hotspot name? It was like Perfect Cloth Buffalo or something like that? Perfect Cloth Buffalo, yeah. So uh, I'm just going to type in Perfect Cloth. So you need the dashes for sure? Yes. In yeah. this case, yes. I haven't made some improvements I could have. So user can also additionally enter the number of days they want to look at. I think by default, if you don't provide it, it takes like seven days. But okay. I can say four, and it will provide me for last four days. And then you have information that you can read. <laughs> nice. So it will just say, hey, 10, 10 challenges were submit transmitted in last four days, 56 nearby hotspot. Again, this is really just overall witnesses. Yep. And when was the last POC challenge? And total valid and invalid, right? You have that here. And uh, 89 was trans witnessed by your hotspot, by 19 nearby hotspots, and nine valid. Uh, last POC challenge was this. So uh, you have back that? to the Helium Hiker. OK. Yep. And yep, there is a link to Helium Hiker, which is the dashboard we were seeing. Dig it. Now, you're a data analysis guy kind of by trade, right? Yes. So what are you thinking? Like, where do you think this will go from here? Are you going to start to do like ratios between transmitted and witnessed? Are you looking for like anything where you're, you're starting to like tease out the data that might be more important than just looking at it? Like, what, what do you think this will be able to do in the next six months, year, something like that? Yeah. So uh, for Helium Hiker, again, the, the or the Hiker board, the main purpose was for, uh, this is something I had in my mind for a long time and with like uh, Google Home and a lot of other things, like a lot of things are going into the chatbot mode. So I wanted to provide users information in a way where they can just easily understand it. Like I, if I provide chart, it will take some understanding of the data to understand it. But if I provide it this way, user yeah. has easy access to information that they can understand. So that was my purpose behind this. And I would say that there are a lot of things I can still do to improve. Sure. Um, in terms of like I can provide a, and I some of the things are in my pipeline but I haven't really been able to work on it for maybe last couple of days yeah. but uh, things like if everything is invalid like show in red that hey you really want to maybe take a look here because something is going on right so based on the data I'm currently just showing this is your hotspot stats are yep. but based on that stats I actually want to include some hints to say, um, you looks like 90% of your witnesses are invalid. We really want to check on this, right? Things like that, where based on the data also provides some hints that something is going on or everything is fine. So like kind of an indicator where go green, not so green. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. And are you using that? Are you calculate, calculating that for your own hotspots and seeing like, okay, if I've got this ratio or, or this stat, whatever it is, it's it's a clear indicator. And are you kind of automating that or still like you're just thinking about what is going to be important and then how do I communicate what that is? Yeah, I mean, it's so I do that for my hotspots as well. But this is mainly what I look at is I, I think it goes back to the challenge analysis, right? That for me, every day can be different. And yep. I would like to 
get an average of see what's going on because a lot of users do that as well where one day their hotspot perform bad and they freak out right and it could be just because of low consensus times and stuff like that so there could be many things so i i when i look at it i try and tell users that hey look at over seven or ten days or even weeks yeah and see how the data looks right because that provides you an indicator of what's going on and uh, if you are seeing a trend I believe some user has suggested that to me that, hey, if you can provide a trend line here, uh, that would be awesome. I was like, yeah, that's a good suggestion. And I can probably try and in include that, right? So things like that. Uh, I do get a lot of feedback from users. And I, I encourage everyone who is using my tools and if they see any benefit of adding more information or just presenting information in a different way, I, I welcome all the feedback. OK. Dig it. And then do you have any plans to monetize this? Are you going to put it behind a paywall? Are you going to take donations? Are there things like ways for people to say, hey, let me throw you a couple HNT for making this? Yep. So uh, if user wants to throw me HNT, they can mm -hmm. uh, see that I have thanks command. So uh, it will just give you the HNT address, and uh, mm -hmm. they can donate it if they want to. Uh, I don't plan to monetize this. Mm -hmm. So it will never be behind the firewall. In fact, uh, I, uh, I will be trying and making this open source. So yeah. uh, if uh, anyone is interested, they can contribute to the project for HikerBot. And uh, yeah, I, I think that's coming fairly soon, where I'll, making, I'll be making this open source. Super cool. What was the bread one, the exclamation point bread? <laughs> so that was just uh, bread puns. I love those bread puns. <laughs> OK. <laughs> oh, that's funny. All right. Yeah, so there, there are a couple of other ones as well. And uh, those are real popular ones because yeah. uh, that does the network connectivity. So uh, uh, I believe if you are running your own miner, you can do like a peer ping and peer book commands. Yeah. And uh, what that does is it basically, uh, so behind the scene, I am running a miner. And uh, when user is trying to use this bot commands, is actually just doing it through miner. But mm -hmm. providing this information in a Discord board. And that's the power of it, because it. user don't need to have a knowledge of how to run a miner, right? If they just come to Discord board and right. tell what they want to do, they can. And I handle everything behind the scene. So uh, cool. let's say large butter that, right? So what this does is it's pinging that hotspot, and it will give me the information back. And in this case, everything looks fine, because it pinged. And in 78 milliseconds, which was probably pretty great time as well. But in, in, in many cases, this fails. So if you just browse up, I'm pretty sure that there are going to be a lot of cases where uh, whether it fails. So in this case, peer ping, this hotspot, failed to connect. Well, in this case, it's server down. But uh, there are cases where it's like a relay, uh, a proxy, yeah, so this one says timeout relay session. So there's something going on with the relay, right? So user are able to use this information to kind of say, hey, that uh, do I need to do something? Many cases, I, and, and I'm trying to add more information here as well, because sure. uh, sometimes these errors are helpful, but I would like to provide users more information. So let's say, for example, if it is a timeout relay session, maybe it is behind the relay, and it's really not able to communicate with the network. So yep. they may want to open up the uh, port 44158 and uh, uh, or maybe turn on UPnP, right? So those are the kind of things that we can do in addition to just showing what the output is. And, and that's my plan for this, where I would like to show user more information or at least give a hint that, hey, you know, if this is the error, most likely this is what's going on. And a and, and lot of users have been successfully able to change the config and able to ping as well. So they come here, does it multiple times, and I see that, yep, it went from not connecting to connecting. And that that feels great. Cool. So this is probably a reasonable time to kind of explain a little bit about how the hotspot that you buy as a production unit, if it's a rack or Synchrobit or Bobcat, it comes with a packet forwarder and the miner together in one thing. But what you're doing is you're running a miner on the cloud, not sure if it's DIY or not, if it's... it's um, No, it's just a miner. There is no packet forwarder, and yep. it's not registered to Helium. So I don't uh, 
mine any HNT for that, but it's yep. just a software miner, which yep. which is just providing me access to those commands. Super cool. That's a, that's a really cool thing you're doing. Cause that, I mean, it's not like it's a huge cost, but there's a cost to all this. There's whether you're running it on DigitalOcean or Amazon or whatever, it's pretty cool to see that you're saying like, Hey, I'm willing to, to pay a little bit to help everybody out. And I can see that people are, are using this thing to ping their hotspots and see what's going on. So kudos, kudos to you for doing a good job. And thank you. Yeah, no, I mean, the, for me, uh, even as a hiker bot or helium hiker, right? I, I treat it as a, as a side project, which is providing me an opportunity to learn more things and right. uh, connect with the community and get more feedback so that I can improve on my product. And, and, and it's been going really great. Yeah. Uh, yes, there is a cost associated with uh, hosting and everything, but uh, I wouldn't consider it that much compared to what I'm gaining from this. Right. Oh, really, really cool. Dig it. Was there, um, is there anything else you wanted to show off about HikerBot or the challenge receipt analysis stuff? Or is that, does that cover it? Yeah, I mean, there is just like other commands that user can uh, dig into as well, right? So for example, I have the hot stat and hot POC. Uh, I, I think we looked into the hot POC, but there is a hot stat command as well, which just tries to give uh, some information uh, about the reward, if the hotspot is online or not, and things like that. But yeah, there are other commands out there that user can definitely try. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, peer yeah. book is there as well, but I mean, some commands are really technical and user really need to understand that, hey, what they're trying to do. So commands are there and they are helpful, yep. but uh, I I wish to have more details so yep. that user can take one more step further and say, hey, okay, I can see the information and I can understand the information. Because sometimes this is what I'm facing right now where user come and say, hey, this is what the uh, error is. What should I do? And uh, for me also, I, I kind of need to learn and understand what, what's going on behind sure. the scene. So I, my hope is that I will try and uh, make the code open source and yep. I will try and invite community members who have experience with maybe uh, Erlang, right, where this code is written for the miner, so yep. that they can they can help me uh, fill that gap where what this error means and what can user do to fix it. So the things like that. I, I, that's definitely something I'm looking forward to, um, making it open source and uh, creating sort of issues in GitHub so that user can uh, take on them. Oh, cool! I'll, I'll let some of my uh, geeky homies know, and maybe they can they can jump in and help out. And then I, I'm imagining at some point there'll just be like a pinned post at the top that says, "This is what it means when you see whatever the term is." Yeah. So I I have seen in the other server, for example, uh, like when I again this is like a member joint, right? But I would like to provide out in this manner where information is a little bit formatted. So like, hey, this is the command you ran, maybe this is the output it is, and maybe other hints and stuff like that, and even a green or red indicator that yep. tells what's going on, right? So something like this is something I'm planning to do. Uh, again, I'm not there yet, but I'm, I'm hoping that I would be very soon on that. Love it. Oh, it's super, super cool to see it all. See it all just develop. It's been neat to watch it from kind of stumbling on it at first, I think when you first posted it, and now seeing it really starting to mature a little bit and, and, and seeing where you're taking it. Yeah, no, I, I, I'm i very excited about it as well. Again, in, uh, even this started slow, but I know that a lot of users are popping up and more and more hotspots are coming online. And I can see that like just in like days, I'm getting a lot of new members. Again, it, it's all they are coming in and making sure that they have done their studies and they exactly know where they need to go, what they need to use to make sure that that hotspots are up and running fast, which is awesome to see because <laughs> this long hotspot wait time is actually making users uh, go and do their research and uh, make sure that they're ready when the hotspot comes, which is pretty awesome to see. Yeah, yeah, you know, I, I I get the same thing as people ask for help and they're like, oh, should I get it just before the hotspot gets here? It's like, no, get it as the more time you have to prepare, the better your your deployment will be. Yeah, so I do have one, well, or, or maybe two more things. So I'll quickly just dive into it. Yeah. So I do plan to make the hiker bot available through Helium Hiker as well. So currently this is in development, but yeah. uh, if user goes to Helium Hiker, mm -hmm. they will be able to just click on the hiker bot. Mm -hmm. And this is sort of like an integrated window where they will be able to uh, participate as well. Okay, cool. Super cool. Nice. I like how you're like teaching yourself how to do this stuff and then figuring out where it's going to be useful. Yeah.
try and find a use case and build it. <laughs> I like it. I like it. And what there was one more thing. Uh, yeah. So I also had created. Uh, I had presented it earlier, but uh, if anyone is interested, I can uh, uh, provide more details. Sure. But uh, this is another dashboard that I had created on the DY MetaBase instance, where uh, it's more of like a reward report, uh, where user can look at high level, like what's the reward for an account rewarded the each account hotspot level and uh, uh, monthly as well as the daily earnings. Interesting. Yeah, people are fascinated by everyone else's earnings. It's uh, it's funny because there's not much you can do with the information that I can see other than see like, oh, that's a pretty good pattern. But most people don't have control over the kind of deployment pattern they have. They got their house, their mom's house, some friends and family and work. So it's sometimes it can be frustrating to see a really good pattern and then to know that you can't really get to it yet. But Pretty cool yeah. to see how it's like all getting broken down and, and displayed. Yeah, and I'll just put a shameless plug to this as well. So I have been also promoting uh, DY MetaBase instance. So okay. if uh, any users who loves playing with data and maybe let's say visualization tool, uh, this is a really good uh, tool and it, it is available. So if anyone wants to play around with it, I'm happy to show around what the data looks like and how they can create it. So uh, yeah, any user who wants to uh, get into detail and even create their own dashboards, they can reach out to me or Jamie D Jamie Dubs, and yep. uh, we will be set you we will set you up on the with your account, and then you can start playing around with it. And that's how I started. Like I wanted to do this, so I reached out to Jamie. He was kind enough to create an account for me, and then from that moment, I have never not stopped. Like I quick continuously go back here and work on new things.